Hi everyone, I'm Refashion Hippie. Um, and some of you have been asking about how to get into doing audiobook work. So I wanted to show you my very basic tutorial, including all of the stuff that I use, from the actual physical equipment, um, to the programs I use, and just basic tips on how to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by showing you my little studio. So this, I think quite obviously, is my closet. <laughs> um, I have a reasonably sized closet, which is exactly where you want to be. Um, not only is it the only quiet space available in my home, um, I have two dogs, two cats, a kid and a husband. So finding somewhere silent was really important for me, but also the space was really important because you notice if you go into like a bathroom, you're going to get a lot of reverberations. You don't want to be in a really large room. You don't want to be in a really small room. So this was perfect. And it has a lot of sound dampening already because it has all of these clothes hanging all around me. But I got some very basic panels from Amazon. Links to everything will be down below so you guys know where to shop. Um, not that you have to buy from Amazon, you don't at all. I also like don't know how to make money through affiliate links, so that doesn't help either of us. Um, but uh, this was just really good to add to my little corner. And I stuck it up with some sticky tape. It doesn't always like to stick, but this is what my little panels look like. Very basic. It's gonna come down, they don't like to stick. It also gives me this happy little beehive thing. Next step, I use a Rode mic, R-O-D-E. It's been very, very easy for me to use. And one of the reasons I love it, I will show you later, it automatically comes with Rode Connect, which is what I use to record all of my audio. There's a lot of different options, but for me, this worked really well. I think it was like $120, $150, so really not that crazy. Um, I did buy this pop filter which can be helpful when you have to speak closer to the mic, but you don't want those like sort of noises. Um, I actually don't use this a ton. It wasn't expensive. Like I said, maybe 15 bucks. So yeah, you know, if you want to get one, see if it makes a difference. It's not that crazy. You could also frankly like stretch some leggings over a hanger and be fine. Like, like there's ways around it. Um, and I got this just because I like to do longer audiobooks. So having this arm that lets me readjust so I can lie down in my chair or, you know, just be comfortable uh, was important for me. Again, you don't need it. You can just have a regular stand, have it set up right in front of your mouth. That will also be fine. Um, another piece of equipment that I use is these headphones. Now, I'll be completely honest. I don't wear them when I'm recording that's an option for you. You can have them on when you record. If you want to hear your voice a little more pure, a little more distilled, but the way that I like to do audiobooks is a lot more conversational. I like for you guys to just really hear me as if I'm in a room speaking with you. Uh, the distinction is maybe slight, but it is there. So I don't have them on when I'm recording. I do put them on when I'm editing because that's when you want to make sure that you're not hearing Tank and Onyx in the background, you know, and you're not getting uh, Bluey playing from upstairs. Like you want to make sure none of that's happening. Um, so I do plug them in and listen when I am editing my stuff just to make sure that everything sounds good. And then my last piece of equipment is my computer itself. Again, I use very basic and either inexpensive or totally free software. You're probably going to be fine with anything. You don't have to use what I use, but you know, any kind of computer that can hold your stuff you're good. Okay. That's phase one. Oh, I forgot my super duper comfy chair. I'm going to show you my chair because I love it so much. Okay. So it is just, I'm, I'm not a professional. It is just a big chair, but it's the kind I can fold my legs into because when I sit, like I'm a leg crosser. I cross my legs. It's really important. I cross my legs. I have to. Um, and you might not think about it, when, when you're first starting out, but like, if you have to sit and record for an hour at a clip, you're going to have to be comfortable. So I would say invest in a chair. It doesn't have to be a gaming chair. I don't care what you use, just something where you will be comfortable that doesn't squeak and make noises when you're moving around because you're going to have to change positions. You're going to have to, you know, 
<sighs> okay, so that's my last piece of equipment. Okay, and now let's move on to the programs I use. Okay, so because I have a Rode mic, this is what I use to record into. It is called Rode Connect, and it automatically comes with the microphone when you buy it. So you can see as I'm speaking, whoop, yeah, there goes the panel. I'm not kidding. They fall down all the time. <laughs> I'm not a professional. Um, as I'm speaking, this is moving up and down. If we were to... Very, very basic. So if you want to start a recording here, you just hit record, do all the stuff. It's really very basic to use. If I'm doing it, it's basic. Um, and then all of the recordings that I've actually made are over here. You can choose how to export them and then which file they go into. So I keep all of my books in progress together. Very easy program to use here. Next, let's open up Audacity. That's where I physically edit. This is Audacity. Looks very, very basic because it is. It is also completely free, which we love. So I'm going to import some audio that we can just sort of mess with. Um, and one thing I love is it takes you automatically to whatever you last worked on. So this was a project for Derricka Foster. It should be coming out really soon. So let's just open it up. And this is what an edited audio track looks like. So if we start this at the beginning, I turn the sound up, but you can hear, you can see that it's playing up here. And this is where I go in and edit all of my stuff. It is very basic to do. If you have any questions, you can email me, but there's also a million YouTube videos and I don't do anything really complicated in here. Let me explain to you what I do edit. And back to me. So over the course of a normal conversation, when you're talking to someone, there's a lot that your brain edits out. One of those things is like pauses like I just did. When you're speaking to someone and there is a natural pause, that's fine. But if you were to take just the audio, that can sound very weird. Um, another thing that your brain constantly edits out, and I'm sorry, because now that I've said it, you're probably going to think about it, is the sound of someone breathing. When you're listening to an audiobook that has not been edited, you hear so many breaths. <laughs> like, it's so weird. Um, so when you're sitting in the car, sometimes you'll, your brain will pass right over them and it's fine because you accept it as normal. But sometimes there's like a, that you just hear and hear and you have to get rid of it. <laughs> so that's a big thing. Um, the two biggest things that I edit out though, are the normal room sounds. There's just a base noise level in every room that you'll ever be in. Your brain ignores it, but if it's in an audio track, you'll hear it. Um, so whenever I start a new recording, I just leave 10 seconds of totally dead air so I can get the room sound and edit it out, which Audacity does really easily, really quickly through your whole track. Not bad at all. The other thing you're gonna edit are your stops and starts. Um, some authors choose to read the works in their entirety before beginning. I do not. We'll discuss that later at the end when I go over some tips for you guys. But you will stumble over words. You will get your tongue all twisted. And when I first started, I would stop recording and start again until the first take was perfect. That's silly. That's just crazy. You don't have to do that. Um, so if you need to pause, take a drink, go back, start the line over again, that's fine. You just edit it out and then make sure that you're listening to it so there's not some weird big tonal shift change because I have to do that all the time. Sometimes my daughter will be like pounding on the door because she wants juice or something. So I have to come back to a track, you know, 15 minutes later and remember that my voice was a couple octaves higher when I was speaking last time because the character was getting excited. So if I come back in down here, it's going to sound really weird going from this to this immediately. You know, so you just have to go back and check. Um, but it's it's really not that complicated to do. And like I said, Audacity has been open for so long. There's so many videos teaching you how to do the basic stuff on there. Um, it's not that difficult to learn. And with Audacity, you tend to learn one time and then you're good and you know it forever. And it's just sort of formulaic. At the beginning of each recording, you do the same thing over and over listen through the recording to edit out the weird stuff, 
and then you're good. The other thing that I appreciate about Audacity, every platform that you upload to is going to have specific requirements for that platform. Um, that will include the DB levels, the RMSs, all, all stuff that I know nothing about. I just know how to make my files acceptable to their system, which again is easy. Let me stress this. If the Wi-Fi goes out in my house, I lay down and wait for death to come. Like I do not, I am not a tech person at all. So if I've figured this out, you will figure it out. So what I'm going to show you guys next is ACX. That's where I find most of my work as an audiobook reader. And they have specific requirements for each file, including that they have to be MP3s, uh, no background noise, stuff like that. So if you try to upload a file and it identifies a problem with that file, it will tell you exactly what it is. It will tell you exactly what the problem is. So all you have to do is go back to your file in Audacity, update it, try to upload again. It's not scary. Um, the first time I was doing my audiobook, it took me probably two hours to get my first audio file completely correct, like way too long. Um, but again, once I did it, I knew how to do it. So it was less scary next time. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the programs that we can use. So this is ACX. Right up there, super easy. Um, this is basically Amazon's sister for audiobooks. So if you have gotten books from Amazon, this is how you get audiobooks also listed on Amazon. And when you upload an audiobook to ACX, they make it available on Amazon, Audible, Shopify, lots of different platforms. So what we're looking at here is just my profile. It's very basic. They don't ask for a lot of information, just name, where you're from, and then a couple different audio samples that people can check you out with. Now, it's important that you have these audio samples. It is. It's very important that you have these samples, but that's not usually how you're going to find work. This is a site where authors find people to do their audiobooks. So let's go over here to find projects. And what's great about this site is it will identify all the key areas that you could be looking for. So if you, for example, are not interested in doing erotica books, if you do not want to read erotica, you just unclick, it removes that. If you think business and careers is going to be so super, super boring, you can get rid of that. If you only want to do children's audiobooks, that's an option as well. You can identify exactly what you're looking for, fiction or nonfiction. Project length is really important. If you're just getting started, choose something under three hours. 10 hours or more will kill you. You will go insane. You will be climbing the walls. So under three hours. Um, language, English for me. I can do some accents. I do not speak another language. Voice gender. I generally do female or gender neutral. Voice age, this is important too. Uh, adult primarily for me. Vocal style. So this has a lot of different things you can look through. I mean, there's a lot to play with. I'm just gonna leave this for now so we can take a look at this. So let's look at our options here. The first ones that are coming up. So let's see what our options are. First one here, eat like a local, split, split, Croatia food guide. So that's something I never would have looked into by myself. Um, important things to note here are that it is for travel and tourism. They're looking for an English speaking person with an adult voice and it is a royalty share. So let's talk about what that means. There are three options to getting paid. Number one is a royalty share. That basically means that you get zero money up front but you get 50% of the royalties on every audiobook that is sold from now until the end of time. So this can be a good option if you look at a book and you think that it's going to sell well. Um, you also have to determine if you need the money now or if you're okay risking it and seeing if some more is going to come in later. Personally, no offense to Croatia, I don't know that a guide on eating locally in Croatia is going to be a big seller. That seems like something that, you know, in five years might be completely kaputski because a lot of restaurants will have changed. So I personally, I'm so sorry, 
would not move ahead with this project on a royalty share basis. What I would accept is PFH. So that is money per performance hour. So in that case, somebody might pay you standard rate is between 50 and a hundred dollars per performance hour. So that means that the entire audiobook, once it is completed, let's say it's eight hours and you're getting a hundred dollars an hour, you make $800. Now that's the only money you will ever get. So it doesn't matter how well it sells. If it does crazy good, you get nothing in addition, but you get the standard rate that you agree to. There is a possibility to do what they call a split rate, which would mean the standard rate, I believe, is that you get paid a little less per performance hour and you earn 15% of the royalty fees from here in perpetuity. It's, it's whatever you and your author become familiar with. But those are the different sort of pay rates that you can expect for an audiobook if you're using a program like ACX. But let's take a little look at this so you can see some of the more details on it. So here's the page to actually physically audition for this one. First, right up here, you can message the rights holder if you have any questions. This is going to tell you a little bit more about this book in general. So it's going to give you basically just the summary of the book itself. And here's some important information on whether or not you want to take this project. So it will give you the current Amazon sale rankings on how well this book is doing. So if you have a book that's like top 10 on Amazon, yeah, you might want to take a royalty. The Amazon rating here looks pretty good. It's only of four ratings, but you can view this title on Amazon to get some more information. And over here, it's going to have some information from the title holder, from the person who actually wrote this book, about things that they want you to know. So this could be a really important segment to look into if you want to know if you have to do like any specific type of voices, maybe how many characters, any accents you might want for this book, this is the section that will tell you that. If we wanted to audition for this book, you go to the audition tab and it will give you this script to download. So let's take a look at what they want us to read. We can just open this up in Word. So this is what you would be reading if you wanted to audition for this book. And it looks like it's really not a lot of information. So again, I'm not, I'm not going to work with this book. Um, Usually what authors want to include when they are setting up an audition is a chapter that will give you a real sense of what this book is about. It could just be their grocery shopping list. It, it is completely up to the author. There are some people who've been writing for 40 years, there have been some people who are writing for 40 minutes. It really depends on what the author sends you. <laughs> but it'll give you a really good sense of the book itself, the, what the project will be like, and what your author will be like. Because your job as an audiobook narrator is to deliver the product that they want. That is your job. And I really do want to stress that. So, you know, you can read through and say there's a lot of grammatical errors here. They haven't conjugated correctly. They've said that Abu Dhabi is in this region. It's not like, that's not your job. That is not your job. Unless the author tells you, I would like notes, please. So there's a lot about this project that is, is telling me I don't want to go near it. Um, but fortunately, ACX has a lot of different things that you can filter through so you can find exactly what you're looking for. One of the reasons I love this job is I'm basically getting paid to read. So I love doing fantasy. I love doing sci-fi. I love doing mysteries, murder mysteries, my God. Um, I don't mind doing erotica. Some authors choose not to, but you can filter what you're looking for. So I get to look at stuff that I would love to read anyway, and I get paid to do it. It's the best. Okay. So once you have a couple different things on your resume, once you've gotten some other work, you know what you're doing, you're a little bit more professional, there's another site I want to recommend that you guys look at. So this is voice one, two, three. This is more in line for commercial work. So if somebody's looking for you to do a 30 second radio ad, but they want to give you $2,000. This is probably where they will look. 
Now, I have not signed up for this yet because I don't think that my resume is big enough and this is just a little more professional that I like. Like you can sign up for free, you can audition for pieces for free, but they also have plans that just sort of boost your ranking and immediately ask for your credit card information. So again, I'm not doing this yet because I just feel like I'm not here. But once you get some more stuff under your belt, you can sign up for this and it has the real possibility to bring in some more money for you. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is just some basic advice that I have for you if you are starting doing some audiobook work. First, like I said, make sure that you have a good space, make sure that it is quiet, and make sure you have the right equipment. Now that doesn't mean the most expensive equipment, and it doesn't mean my equipment. It means whatever is going to work best for you. And it could be as stupid as having a little squishy plush that you have with you. Whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable and ready to read for hours, that is what you need. Other stuff. So you will have to take breaks. There will be times where you know you're going to have to cut a section. For me, it's not worth it if I've been recording for an hour straight to sit there and listen back for an hour straight. So I like to give myself spikes in my audio for when I know I'm going to have to cut. So if I hear my daughter coming through that door, I clap. And that will give me a big spike in my audio then I go, I get whatever she needs, I get her settled, I come back in, maybe 10, 15 minutes has passed, I settle myself back in, have my water, get set up again, and before I'm ready to start speaking, before I'm ready to start speaking again, and then I begin. So when I'm going in to edit my audio, the first thing I look for is the space between those big claps, and I just go in, delete, edit it out. That saves me a lot of time when it comes back to editing. So I recommend that you do that. I would love like one of those movie clicky things. I have one. So I clap. <laughs> um, when you're doing multiple characters, books tend to have maybe four or five voices that you primarily need to switch through. And then other people that just sort of come in, um, but they don't stay for that long. So you have to keep the voice in your head. But when I'm reading a book, I go through, cut all of that. So I choose not to read a book in its entirety before I begin. Some voice actors like to do that, totally fair. I don't, but I make sure I know who the primary characters are. I develop their voices a little bit. An important thing for me is I develop a mannerism. So right now I'm reading Super Submersible Swimming Suit Mac Diver by Benjamin Durham. And it's got three main characters. Cameron is the male when I'm doing his voice. Because he is the protagonist, I do my regular thing. When I'm speaking as Cameron, I just have a slightly lower voice, but that's all I have to do. That's all I do for Cameron. When I am going to Okami, she's a 14 year old who owns her own restaurant. She is a very busy girl. So when I switch into Okami's voice, I go a little bit higher. I tend to give myself a little bit more of a smile so that I know how I'm speaking and I move my hands a lot because Okami is always busy. So that's one thing that I do and it just helps me remember what voice I'm speaking into. So when I'm Okami, I move my hands a lot more. That's something that helps me. Sometimes when I'm doing a girly girl, I twirl my hair. Sometimes I'll hold a specific object. Whatever it is that when I switch voices, I switch mannerisms. That has really helped me. Um, and it's something that I think could help you too. Because when you're first starting out and you have to do four or five voices, it can be really weird. <laughs> it can be really weird. Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, so you have the option of like loading up enough of your voice into an AI that you could just have the AI do audiobooks. Let me strongly caution you against that for a couple of reasons. One, authors hate it. <laughs> authors really, really hate it. A lot of these proposals, you will see people saying no AI, um, which I think is very legitimate. I think it's very, very legitimate. I, I hate it. Um, I think it's very soulless and I think you can tell. So I choose not to do it. You, you can, but I don't think AI is complete enough, um, for you to really be there yet. I also 
part of the reason that I don't read a book ahead of time, yes, it saves me some time, but more importantly, I get to experience it with the audience. I think that a movie is so much better when you have a friend sitting next to you and something scary happens and they jump and they grab you. I, I, I love that. I think that something's so much funnier when someone's sitting there laughing with you. So for me, I like to have those experiences with my audience. Like when Cameron's being chased by a big shark and I don't know what's going to happen. You can hear that in my voice because I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I, th I think it makes it so much more fun. So I, I like to have that excitement in my voice with my audience and with an AI that just doesn't happen. It's, it's a very flat read. You can hear the words are cobbled together a little bit. So I would, I would advise you stay away from AI, especially if you want to go into commercial work, because that absolutely is reactionary. Um, okay. I think that's all my advice. I think that's everything I have. Um, other than that, just keep auditioning, audition, audition, audition. Um, I, I am a trained actress. I, I worked as an actress for a little while and they say that a successful actor, successful gets 10% of the jobs they go out for. If you know a professional actor, they are used to hearing the word no. It is something you just have to get used to. Um, you will not book every job you go out for. You will not. You will meet very weird authors. Um, you will book a job and then suddenly halfway through they're like, oh, I forgot to mention, this character is Chinese. Can you speak Cantonese? That's going to happen. <laughs> you just got to roll with the punches. Um, but you can do it. It's, it's not that complicated. It can be a lot of fun. Don't let yourself stress over it, but do take seriously the dates that your authors give you. If they want something by the third and it's just not ready, that is on you. All right. I think that's all I got. Email me anytime. I'm here for you guys. I love what I do. If I can help you do it, I would love to. Also, I would love to retire to a private island. So please subscribe and buy my audiobooks and buy the books I wrote. Just give me your money. I would like it, please.